everybody. We've got a quick video for you today, and it is a kind of entry level using LiveScope. How I've learned to use it over the last two or three months, give you some tips on the baits I like to use with it, and some of the settings that I have. So come along, check it out. Offshore fishing today with a live scope. Um, hopefully, we can get you on some more fish offshore. If you haven't bought a live scope yet, go check out American Legacy Fishing. They keep having, uh, they had a restock of the LS34 transducers here recently, which uh, certainly keep an eye on that. They usually post it on their Facebook page. I'll link it down, uh, down below. All right, I'm going to take out the tripod for just a minute. I'm going to turn this into kind of how I've been learning live scope offshore and live scope in general this has been uh, quite the learning curve I bought it probably three or four months ago now and it takes a remarkable amount of time to really learn it understand what you're looking at and everything about your fishing is somewhat modified when you start really using the screen that much um, I don't have spot lock which is uh, which makes it a little bit more difficult with live scope because you know if I had spot lock and then a separate head to be able to turn you know really hands free would be ideal that would let me really focus in on the spot so I've had to make some accommodations to to really uh, be able to live scope fish offshore I've, I've struggled with it it's always windy here in North Texas Whoa. so I've had to do some things the first one is this makeshift anchor trolley so I have to anchor pretty much all the time when I'm offshore because it's always windy like I said so I just took a carabiner some paracord and put this between uh, put this paracord between two cleats with a uh, zigzag cleat and that's my uh, anchor trolley on my boat kind of a, a took that from the kayak world and what that does is it lets me drop anchor and I can turn the boat uh, essentially 180 degrees without picking up the anchor and still stay in that relative spot. So whenever I'm kind of finding an area I want to fish, I'll drop the anchor, I'll hook it up to the anchor trolley. That gives me like that 100, you know, I kind of like to fish on the live scope maybe in a 100 degree range of turning the trolling motor head. And once I kind of max out that range, I can go to the anchor trolley, spin the boat, and get another 100 degrees. Because uh, you'll find sometimes that the four cleats on, an a, on a boat, uh, typical four cleats, are just not good enough. Your bow's always going some way, and if someone is fishing with you, you know, they're always basically kind of at, at the back seat, if you will. So I could take this anchor trolley, pivot the boat 90 degrees perpendicular to the wind, and we can both fish a bank or something like that. So that's been, uh, that's been pretty handy. Uh, it's fairly new. I need to add some rollers to it. I mean, anytime you put it on a kayak, you get kind of a, a bearing surface but this cleat is pretty smooth. We'll, we'll see how it works out before I do too many modifications, but so far, so good. So that's uh, number one thing I've had to do is uh, an anchor trolley. The live scope itself, you're gonna have to excuse the deck of the boat because we're fishing. And it should be okay. Um, so I'm on top of an offshore hump here. So I'm at 14 feet and just out here it's 20 feet. And you can see some bait right there. And there's a couple fish around it. There's some stick up there. And really what I'm doing is I'm just scanning around. There's some structure there. There's a couple of fish there. And what I've learned is sometimes you just have to sit still for a minute. So this thing is tied to my foot. You know, when I move the foot, it moves the head. And there's probably a fish right there that's, uh, he's just kind of stagnant. And we'll keep moving around. So that's probably a fish hanging off there. And what you'll do is you'll kind of just leave it there. Now he's gone, right? I didn't move the boat. And you scan around, you probably find them again. I'm turning a little bit. There's another little ball of bait out there. And this is what I'm fishing offshore. I'm just kind of scanning around 60 feet out. Uh, it's tied to the arrow on the trolling motor head. So I flip it in that direction. And that's probably the next part of this is understanding, you know, there's some baits that work pretty well. I'm just moving my foot around here. There's some baits that move, work pretty well for me on a, on the live scope and there are some that flat out don't like a deep diving crankbait you know you can kind of line it up and make sure you're hitting bottom or seeing how far out you hit bottom but that's that's pretty difficult finding your bait on the live scope is not easy at all when i first started uh, maybe this is as a, as a starter standpoint of live scope is um 
I'm running at 80 feet of range, which is pretty far, I think, for a 93 SV. If I had an ultra unit with some better resolution, I could probably run that out to 90, 100 feet a little more consistently. I mean, it'll do it. It just, everything gets a little bit more pixelated and it's not quite ideal, but finding your bait is super difficult. Your, your, your cone angle is pretty tight. So you really need to focus on that and be basically a surgeon with your foot to be able to find and track your bait and uh, watch along. And that's where anchoring the boat certainly helps. You know, if I can keep the boat in a similar relative position, that definitely helps. Um, I started with an A-Rig. Let me find some light here. Yeah, I started with an A-Rig and that's probably the easiest thing to find. It, it moves slow and makes a giant profile in the water. So uh, certainly as you start to learn how to find your bait on a live scope, just throw the A-Rig. You'll start to get a feel for it. Um, some other baits that I have found to work well. Hold on, let me reset the camera. All right, now I've got them hands-free, so that's better. What I was saying is that there's a few baits that uh, do well on the live scope. I started with the A-Rig. The jerk bait is something else you'll see a ton of people throw on the live scope. This is a, uh, I started with the Vision 110. This is a, I went to the 110 plus one, and now this is a 110 plus two. And the biggest thing with live scope is you're making relatively short casts. So the bill on this guy, if I'm flipping out to a fish that's 40 feet away from the boat, I can throw this 60 feet, get it down to 10 feet pretty quickly with the plus two lip on it, and be able to, to target those fish. Uh, Jerkbait has been very effective and also extremely frustrating on the live scope because you'll see them, they'll get all hot on it and then you'll twitch, twitch and they just decide they don't want that. Um, but it is amazing to see just how much interest you get in a, in a jerk bait when you're fishing it. It is extremely effective at, at least getting the attention of fish. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, probably this one's all an angle. But this is like a 3, 2.8, 3.2 Kitek on a quarter ounce ball head. This is very hard to see on uh on the live scope now the, the only thing that would be probably harder to see is like a weightless wacky rig but um, this at least has a lead head so it has something for the sonar to ping off of and, and give you a return but i can find this if i'm really dialed in at like 60 feet away from the boat i can see it in 20 to 30 feet of water we'll touch on the settings here in just a second i mentioned i mentioned range but i need to get to depth for you real quick so I'll throw this out there, and this has been one of the most effective things that I've found on the live scope. It has absolutely no drawing power, right? When you're fishing a, a, a Kitek or just a little swim bait like this, fish aren't gonna come from 20 feet away, 30 feet away, and come smoke that bait. They're just, they, they can't even see it, they can't feel it. But you have a live scope. So you can put this thing on their head, right above them, and get it in front of them, and they will eat this thing because it's such a small profile, it's super finessey, and you can just sneak it up on them and I have wrecked them on this thing. So here's actually a perfect example of using live scope. I'm, I'm kind of pitching the spinnerbait up at the bank and as I spin the trolling motor head around I notice there's a couple of fish pretty much directly behind me. So I pick up the uh, Kitek, fire it out there and here we go. And that's really the kind of fish that you can get on. I mean, if you caught those fish otherwise, it'd just be dumb luck, but you're able to actually target them now and go uh, go after them. So I mentioned the A-Rig, I mentioned the Jerkbait and the Kitek or Underspin, pick one. Those are probably my top three things I'll throw on the, um, on the live scope. I've tried like a spinnerbait, but spinnerbait I've learned, uh, the other part of, using the live scope is you really start to learn the mannerisms of the fish. You can throw a spinner bait next to cover and they'll come out and react to it, right? It's a reaction bait. But if you throw it to them while they're out there suspended, if you throw a spinner bait on them, you know, I can put it right in front of them, right above their head. They can see it. They just don't care. They won't even flinch. Uh, if not, they'll swim away. So you start to learn the reaction part of the bait and what 
uh, a certain bait does well, what it does not do well. And like a spinner bait, I'll, I'll never throw it on a suspended fish uh, problem. You know, I may try it every now and then if it's already in my hand, but there's absolutely no interest on some of these suspended fish offshore. But like a jerk bait, I can pull them, I can pull them pretty far away uh, from a piece of cover with the, with a jerk bait and at least get their attention. And if I can't get them, I maybe follow up with that uh, Kai tech and see if we can get it done. So let me touch again one more time on the settings of what I'm doing. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing is it's, you can buy one of these live scopes. One of the worst things you can do is just leave it on the bow and not use it. You spent the money on it. You need to dedicate a lot of time and learn it because it is a fantastic tool. So let me touch again on the settings here. So what I have learned, let me see if I can get a reasonable glare reduction here. Hopefully that's not too bad for you. What I've learned here is the range, like I said before, I'll run it up to 90 to 100 feet. This is at 100. And that's the max I will go on this head unit. I think if I had a better head unit, I could do a little bit better. Uh, the gain here is at 68. About the highest I think I'll take it is like a 72. And you start to get all this noise. And you can tweak that, but uh, when you get noise like that, you can't really find your bait. And that annoys me. So I keep it just to where, I think 67, I like that. Uh, some of these other settings, we'll go into appearance. Uh, amber, I haven't played with the color palettes too much, but amber seems to work. Color limit, 62. Color gain, 78. Um, and these you want to play with. Find what you like. I find that too high of a color gain, it just makes everything blow out. And I don't really get any um, definition of what I'm looking at. TVG I have on low. I may turn that off. I didn't even think it was on. Uh, ghost reject I have off. And noise reject I have medium. If you run too much noise reject, you it becomes kind of laggy, at least on this head unit. And um, you also lose a lot of detail. So... That's kind of the, you know, you're not going to get a super clear image. You can see some fish swimming around there, 20 feet of water. Um, something to keep in mind when you are, you know, if you want to pull up on a target, let's find something close to the boat. Let's just say I wanted to fish this, this guy right here. It's at 60 feet. So there's really no reason for me to be at 90 feet, and there's no reason for my depth to be at 30 feet at that point. So if I wanted to really hone in on that, let's go ahead and bring this up a little. Now I just dedicated more pixels to the depth. I'm going to pull it in mm, probably about there. You see how much bigger it got? It got quite a bit bigger. So that means I'm dedicating more pixels to that area. Go back to where I was. I was here and there. See it's smaller? So if you're trying to find your bait and stuff like that and you really want to hone in on the area, play with your depth and range to get it to, uh, to fill in the area that you're trying to look at. And that'll, that'll help you out. But if you like what you see in this video, Hopefully we get a few fish catches for you. Uh, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time. just in front of the boat. You probably watched it. I just kind of flipped it out there. He followed it all the way down. Kind of let it, I let the worm get to the bottom and kind of twitch twitch. Smoked it. That's what life is going to get you. No life scope there. This is a uh, striking red eye shad. One of my favorite, favorite lipless. Uh, it does have upgraded hooks on it though. Triple grips, gotta do that.